Welcome to MT450 CF Moto. One of the more exciting new bikes and releases of the last year, basically. It's a rare treat to get to ride this one and give you my first impressions in a quick ride episode. First thing I notice, the bike feels really light. I know it's not super light, it's still a heavy, heavy twin cylinder adventure bike, but the bike definitely doesn't feel top heavy and it feels lighter than the numbers actually suggest. This is a tad under 200 kilos when you fully fuel it up and with all the, all the fluids in the bike. And the bike definitely feels very, very nimble. I would say even more nimble than my Torx 660, in low speeds at least. It feels very light on its feet. The engine is, uh, is a twin, of course, it's very smooth. I don't notice any vibrations doing 50. So the bike does feel like a twin should feel. You are definitely losing some of the top end compared to the big rivals like the Tenere 700 and Torex 660 and uh, some of those other mid-sized adventure bikes. You're not gonna get the same amount of grunt out of this engine, but it does feel very happy, happy pulling you along. The engine note on this bike is definitely very nice. It reminds me of the Tenere 700, very much so. So much so that this is probably my second favorite bike what comes to sound at the moment. Tenere is definitely number one, and then maybe this Antorex 660 is competing with the second, second place. But yeah, so far feeling very light on its feet. I, I love the rumble of that exhaust. Even the stock exhaust. Wow, sounds wonderful. You have to bring it up a little bit more than do you do those bigger, bigger adventure bike engines. But it's pulling you along very nicely. But the torque here somewhere in the four to 6,000 RPM is very nice. It doesn't feel like it's choked up. It's it's pulling very, very happily. And the ergonomics of this bike is uh, definitely a big bonus to me. It feels very, uh, actually quite a lot like my Torx 660, but the seating position is a little bit more cramped. Let's see the turning circle. Very balanced, very balanced, easy to do a very slow speed maneuvering with this bike, but very balanced, very nice. Easy for a beginner to get used to this balance. The rear brake feels really nice and firm, very nice biting point. turn off the ABS how does that work yeah you just press it a long time I'm not sure if you can do that while moving and traction control is now off so it shouldn't complain about drifting so let's try it out yeah the standing position for me personally is actually better than the sitting position the sitting position feels a little bit cramped you can probably fix that by putting lower pegs or changing the seat to a high seat. I'm not sure if that's available, but it's not bad. But I would guess that for a bigger guy, like 180 centimeters or above, it might feel a little bit, little bit tight. The knee angle is a little bit tight. Feels very happy here. I am missing the little bit of a bite that I get from my Torx 660. I can drift it way more easily just by using the throttle. But here, 
you're not getting as much of that explosive power that you get from those bigger engines but the power is definitely there for a decent amount of off-road riding plenty for most riders I would say very nice so far I like the first impressions I like it the ergonomics and everything very nice very nice my knee angle is a little bit tight like if I do a long distance with this bike I would probably try to find a bit taller seat but it's so easy to reach the ground in this bike it's way easier than even my Torex 660 which is one of the best mid-size adventure bikes for a smaller rider this is even better I can easily flat foot the bike on both sides and my knee angle is still bent so I can lift myself of the seat like a couple or three centimeters an inch or so when I stand up on the bike so for a short rider this is definitely one of the best contenders in my opinion and listen to that engine wonderful wonderful especially here in the lower rpm ranges Ooh, nice little rumble I would if you like a loud exhaust you can change that to something else and you can probably open this bike way more and get that glorious twin cylinder sound with the 450 okay let's go back the brake feel is really nice it's really nice and progressive yeah I do like that I, I really like it it's firm and very easy to control the pressure of the front brake especially and the rear brake is easy to find the slide is easy to control I have no complaints about the brakes on this bike and the clutch is super light reminds me of my Honda CRF 300 <laughs> oh yeah you can have some fun with this one it's definitely no slouch the smoothness of that twin cylinder engine is just something you don't get with the with the single cylinder thumpers so if you travel long distances and you want comfort and you don't want a super heavy bike I think this is one of the best contenders but don't get me wrong people are selling this bike with the dry weight so the wet weight all included is about 190 plus somewhere there so it's not like this is a super lightweight unicorn bike necessarily but it's definitely not feeling that heavy when you ride it it feels much much lighter than the than the weight suggests even with the tank almost full I would guess it's somewhere 180 170 with how this feels here riding so very well done on the balance on the on this bike and the weight is probably very low on the bike's chassis because it feels so light and nimble excellent excellent let's go and try try out the highway performance on this bike you can definitely drift this bike it's no problem the power is there but you have to give it some beans to do it let's do the highway stint and let's hear the exhaust when you accelerate to full speed is pretty much what I expect from this size of an engine on an adventure bike this comes with the adjustable windscreen so I'll try that right now I'm getting very smooth air in my helmet but I am getting air from halfway to, to my helmet probably the middle of my visor is getting some buffeting but it's very smooth air so it's not shaking my helmet or anything let's put this to the high position all the way up wow this is awesome very very good very good even better than uh, I've always said the Torex 660 has a better fairing than the Tenere 700 when it comes to a stock bike 
but this is better than either one of those bikes this bearing is something I, I missed in my Norway trip with the Touareg very smooth it's still coming somewhere right on top of my helmet so if you are a little bit taller than me I'm 174 centimeters you might get some air in your helmet but for me it goes almost all the way over me so excellent excellent comfort on the wind wind protection on this bike very good job CF Moto excellent on sixth gear doing a hundred kilometers an hour I'm doing a hundred and indicated but it's always with these bikes usually that it's around a hundred real speed it's a six and a half thousand rpm so it is a little bit high if you do a lot of uh, touring with this bike I would probably go with one notch bigger front so sprocket so you get a little bit more highway comfort because this engine can easily pull you at a hundred kilometers an hour doing five and a half thousand and now you're very calm with the engine five and a half thousand rpm the engine feels very unstressed but when I pull it up to six and a half thousand by the way it goes there very nicely on sixth gear it feels a little bit high strung so if you change a little bit higher gearing to the bike which is very easy to do you can probably ask the salesman to do it for you you will get these highway rpms a little bit lower and it's gonna massively increase the comfort of this bike but what comes to the stock gearing i would say that uh, riding around six five and a half thousand rpm 90 kilometers an hour thereabout the comfort is at the maximum now we come to an 80 zone so i'll drop it down to 80 5000 rpm doing 80 excellent comfort excellent comfort one of the best bikes i've driven in the mid-size category super nice super nice and the suspension doing here doing 80 feels very plush very nice it doesn't feel like it's gonna wallow about or or be too harsh or anything feels very comfortable i would easily cruise this along from morning to night no problem all right let's do one acceleration again second gear eight and a half thousand rpm really nicely it gets it gets going very nicely it doesn't pull violently fast like those bigger bigger competitors do with the bigger engines and the high strung engines but yeah it's it's nice it's nice I have no big complaints about this let's do a hundred from uh, 80 now we're going to a hundred zone from 80 on sixth gear to a hundred yeah it's not complaining it's not crazy crazy fast but not, not too bad let's do a bit of a higher speed 120 indicated yeah still very comfortable still really very good balance on the bike very turnable very very confidence inspiring so the bike can definitely do it but i would gear the bike a little bit higher to get those rpms down to somewhere between five and six thousand rpm while traveling so it can it all depends on how you want to travel and where you live if you live in a lot of a highway area you want to gear this up definitely cruising around 100 kilometers an hour very nice very nice only complaint i have is basically the rpm seller are a little bit too high for my taste six and a half thousand i start to hear the engine note a little bit too much but when i drop it down to five and a half it calms down very very noticeably but that's very minor nickel you might never even notice that yourself it depends on the rider the mirrors are nice and big very easy visibility and very stable here doing a hundred or thereabouts I don't notice much of any vibration to my feet none to my ass and do the handlebar less than my Torx 660 which is already a very stable bike so I wouldn't be concerned about that at all excellent comfort 
This doesn't feel like a small bike on a highway. It feels like a mid-sized adventure bike. Pleasantly surprised about this bike. It's excellent. And the power, I was a little concerned about the power numbers, but it, it goes here on the highway so easily, so effortlessly. And the wind protection is absolutely fantastic. Maybe if you get a little bit wider windscreen here, you would get some of the air from your shoulders away. But that's a very minor nickel. I'm, I'm just trying to find fault with this bike at that point. Especially when it's hot. You want to get some airflow to your hands and to your shoulders. Oh, the brakes are nice. Nice and good. Very strong feeling. Wow, this is so low. <laughs> I put my foot down and I expect to be uh, tiptoeing, but I just hit the ground so early. <laughs> uh, for a short rider, I would say that this is probably in stock form good for anyone at above 160 centimeters. If you have any experience, like very easy bike to ride. For a starter bike, for a starter adventure bike, I think this is one of the best bikes on the market today. If you ride a lot of with two on top and you have a whole lot of luggage, maybe you could potentially be struggling a little bit on German highways, but I don't know. I carry 15 to 20 kilos when I travel, even months. And with that kind of luggage, this bike is probably fantastic. Don't put hard luggage on this bike. Just soft bags, something like Krieger bags or Moscow Moto. That suits this bike probably better. Very nice, very nice. Thank you for taking part in this quick ride episode. I hope this was informative, but excellent bike, really nice, really nice bike, wow, CF Moto is coming strong. <laughs>